Thank you. Well, I'm going to put my violin here, and if what I say doesn't make any sense, I'll just grab it and start playing. I want to talk a bit about my philosophy to uh, performance, which I try to apply to the rest of my life as well. So the question I'm most often asked is, do I still get nervous before going on stage? And the answer is, yes, I do. But what I've learned is that nerves aren't such a bad thing. There's a, a great story. One of my heroes um, is a guy called Yasha Heifetz, Russian virtuoso, one of the, sort of a god amongst violinists. Anyway, he was given a lesson one afternoon, and the student arrived at his house and found Heifetz sitting there, fully dressed in his white tie and tails. And he said, Mr. Heifetz, why are you dressed? Your, uh, your concert's not for sort of, six hours. And Heifetz said, well, if I don't get changed now, by six o'clock, my hands are shaking too much to do up the buttons on my shirt front. When I heard that story, I realized that, you know, it's totally natural to be nervous, and it's not something that goes away. And actually, we mustn't want it to go away, because what I found is when I learned to accept my nerves, rather, rather than trying to resist them, rather than trying to sort of escape from them, I was able to channel that sort of fight or flight energy into myself and I was able to focus more and almost transcend my normal everyday self to be sort of like the heat before you go on stage, it's like a crucible and it purifies and crystallizes your ability and intention. So nerves are not such a bad thing, but when I go onto the stage and I commit to the performance, to what I'm about to do, I've got to let go to the moment completely and embrace the fact that I'm taking a risk because performance is a risk. We can't know what's going to happen out there and you can't control the stage and all of the hours of hard work and preparation only serve to sort of strengthen your response to what happens but you can never sort of project on a moment exactly you know, what you want. And that's why expectation of yourself in a given moment or expectation of, of you know, how people perceive you is, uh, is a negative thing. And that's another thing that I've learned you have to strip away when you walk on the stage because it holds you back from possibly greater um, opportunities if you know exactly what you want and you've got sort of blinkered tunnel vision towards it, you won't see other unique, incredible things coming your way. And I've experienced that not only going on stage and using it as a sort of, you know, as a kind of psychological trigger, but in sort of career choices, because, you know, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine asked me to write a piece for a commercial campaign that he was sort of doing. And I thought, well, I'm not a composer, so, uh, you, know, you know, find somebody else. But then I realized, actually, everything is presented to you, you know, for a reason. I like to believe that anyway. And, uh, and I also believe that everything is tailored exactly to your ability. So even though you might think it's a little bit beyond what you can do, somehow, if you find the courage within yourself, and you sort of motivate yourself in the right way, you might surprise yourself. And that's what happened with this composition opportunity. Because I said to him, actually, you know what, I'm going to take this challenge. I think I can do this. And I wrote a piece, a very sort of simple piece in a way, but it's opened the door now to me writing more things. I'm now writing another piece for another project that I'm working on. So that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't sort of been too set in my ways of just playing the violin. So, once you've accepted the nerves and you've let go to the moment and uh, stripped away any expectation of it, you have to deal with uh, probably the hardest element of all, which is when you take a risk, you expose yourself to the possibility of failure. And, uh, I mean, first off, I'll say that you know, nothing worthwhile is ever achieved 
without having gone through some kind of failure. So failure, in a way, is sort of a crucial part of success. But in music, certainly, it's, it's a hard thing to, do, to define because you could play a performance where all the notes are in the right place, but it doesn't touch anyone. And equally, you could play half of the notes, you know, and get the other half I don't know, wrong completely, but you move the audience immeasurably. So what is failure, really? I also actually have a sort of, um, a kind of personal belief that uh, fear of failure, that, you know, it's a widespread disease, stems from a much deeper fear of death. Because I think that the ultimate human failure is the fact that we decay and die in the end. And our addiction to succeeding along the way is almost a sort of a way of touching immortality because we defy that ultimate failure by sort of succeeding against the odds in any given circumstance. So it's fighting a losing battle if you're only going out there to succeed. But once you can let go of that fear of failure and you can go into it, onto the stage or whatever it is that you're doing and be totally happy to fall on your face and uh, screw up, you're probably going to do it more and more times and it's going to lead to a, an eventual success. And even if it doesn't, I think a life, you know, life is about experience, life is about being able to grow and expand as a human being, and you do that more when things go wrong, if you're able to mobilize yourself, than you do when you succeed, actually. So that's the biggest thing together, is that fear of failure. And actually, it's a wonderful story in terms of specific to, to music. Um, another great hero of mine, Fritz Kreisler, um, was playing with Rachmaninoff, two like, kind of titans, the early 20th century, they were uh, performing in Carnegie Hall in the 1920s. And uh, Kreiser was a very kind of debonair, laissez-faire kind of guy, and he said, listen, let's not, let's not rehearse for this performance. Let's, um, let's just go out there and see what happens. And Ramanov, Russian, a little bit more disciplined maybe, and he said, you know, I don't know if that's such a good idea, but Let's try it. this one's for you, Fritz. So they get out there and they're playing away and everything's, everything's going well until Chrysler loses his way in the music. So he's playing all the wrong notes, you know. And he's um, edging his way back to Rachmaninoff, you know, getting more and more sort of out of it. And he sort of whispers in the middle of the thing, so again, where are we? <laughs> And Ratmaninoff replied, coolly, you know, just playing away, in the Carnegie Hall. <laughs> <laughs> so no mercy, no mercy. But anyway, that, you know, that in a way, I suppose, if we hadn't have done that, we wouldn't have had that lovely story to tell. It's become an iconic story amongst musicians. Um, and so failure, you know, there is no such thing as a terrible failure, certainly in, uh, in playing the violin. So my last point, after going through that, is to love and respect yourself throughout the process. That's the hardest thing. Actually, second hardest maybe to, to failing is loving yourself when things don't go well. And uh, I think that's probably harder now than ever before because we live in such a meritocratic society and it's sort of, you know, everyone's promised success if they work hard and if they're you know, discipline. But then if you sink to the bottom of the pile, you really can only blame yourself and you can sort of start to really hate yourself for being there. But actually I think by finding a way of appreciating your greatest asset, which is yourself, and realizing that you're on this journey together, and whether you're up, whether you're down, um, is irrelevant, you know. You have to love yourself regardless. Because it's your life isn't sort of defined by you know, the few successes that you have, or the few great performances that you have, but rather by the bits in between, when you're, you know, when you're down there, you're able to say, I've still got something to say, and I'm going to find a way of, uh, of coming back. So, um, 
which I guess is I'll condense my um, my four points, my four points to going on stage. They would be to work hard, prepare thoroughly, risk failure, let go to the outcome, and then love yourself, whatever that outcome may be. Thank you. And, uh, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that into practice by playing a, a little piece for you now. This is um, a solo sonata by a Belgian composer called Eugène Isai. And it's uh, got a title, The Ballad. <coughs>